All right, everyone is interview time, and we are here with repeat guests. Fabienne, I always want to say Fabienne. Is Fabienne? Am I saying that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fabienne, okay. yes. Fabienne, Fabienne, Anique, and we have most Jeff over here. We're really excited to meet Jeff. Uh, this is our first time meeting Jeff, although I've been stalking Jeff on Instagram for a while, and same with my partner. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard a lot about him too, and I'm yeah. like, this yes. person is fantastic. Yeah. So we're, we are going to see where this episode goes, but it would be about hot sex, deep connection, long term relationships, also marriage, engagement, finding the the one or the thing uh, that feels like it's in true alignment for you. The precious. That my precious. <laughs> finding your precious. <laughs> yes. How to find your precious. And we'll see where else it goes because, you know, it's shameless sex. We like tangents. So before we dive in and our listeners have already heard a little bit about both of you in uh, as we read your bio in the intro, can you please tell us both how you got to where you are today in your line of work? Sure. Um, so where do I get, how do I get to where I am? Um, I, from a very young age, sex and relating and uh, self-intimacy has been a big theme in my life, uh, having a whole bunch of planets in Libra, but then, you know, my entire family upbringing was so much about um, communication, relationships, um, my parent, my mom and my biological dad split when I was young and then she remarried and then uh, they split later on. And they, there was a lot of uh, modeling of, of communication and healthy relating and challenges and all of it. And it was always from a very young age, relating and sex always felt, I, I understood the, the potency of all of it um, and had, had a curiosity in it. And then, yeah, my own, my own emerging sexuality and my own emerging uh, relationships, I, I really dedicated myself from pretty early on to navigating and understanding them more deeply and trying to find ways to understand what was going on and how to really um, hugely through my own intimacy with myself, be able to relate in better ways, be able to, to hold myself in a, in a better way in relating. And so then I started studying sexuality and and became a sex coach and our relationship has been a huge catalyst for for that as well mm -hmm. so it's it's like it's work it's my relationship it's my relationship to myself it's all sort of intertwined within itself I know well you've been on the show this is a third time but now with Jeff mm -hmm. and and I know a little bit about you Jeff but can you tell our listeners a little bit about most Jeff yeah for sure <laughs> like how I came into function in the way that I do professionally now is like it was out of necessity at first. At one point, uh, it was something like 10 years ago, I was going through a really, really, really hard time, like difficult, like full on crisis mode. You can call it dark night of the soul or whatever you want, but, but I was in a really bad place and I was doing everything that I could to get out of it and nothing was really working. And eventually I happened upon the things that I do now and that I teach and that I train people in. And I learned EFT and I learned shadow integration and I learned observation of energy through meditation and so forth. And all of those combined actually started to get me out of the place that I was in that seemed inescapable at the time. And um, and at one point I got myself out of that bad place and realized that I could just keep on going and was like, okay, well, something's clearly working here. I just want to keep on learning this because I just want to keep on feeling better. And at that point or at that stage or whatever, I developed kind of an integrative mindset. And all of a sudden I started just noticing every little bit of helpful information or methodology or modality around me and started to combine that into whatever it is that I do now. And as a result of, of that assimilation of all of these things, eventually at one point I met this one. And mm -hmm. even though I didn't come from a similar background, like as far as, you know, tan tantric sexuality, relationship, intimacy, anything, we still met and we were still capable of linking and connecting in these really specific areas that when that showed up, it was just like game over. Yeah. Speaking of game over, it was game on game because on. Party on <laughs> Fab yeah, Fab Fabi. So we've done several retreats with, with Fabian before. And this last retreat we did with her, which was, was that September, October, mm -hmm. um, we did like this beautiful retreat and, uh, she was like, I have to tell you and Amy a story. And I was like, okay. So we sat down and you had this incredible story about 
your engagement story. And it was at Burning Man this last year. And it brought me to literal like tears. And uh, we don't have to go deep, deep into it. But can you tell all of our listeners, because it's such a magical and just like it made me believe in the power of love. (laughs) I'm not even kidding. And I lose that sometimes. So can you share your engagement story, please? For me. <laughs> yes. Let's see. We've, we've, we've told it a lot of times. We'll see how uh, concise we can get it. <laughs> All right. So what happened was. <laughs> <laughs> Once upon a time. Yeah, so this one time at Burning Man. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was waiting for. I know the oh, stories. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it was um, Wednesday night, uh, moving into Thursday morning, and it was dusk out at Burning Man. And um, and we were, it was the sky was beginning to gray, but it wasn't quite sunrise yet. And we were leaving the sound camp and like just rolling around on our bikes, um, looking at art with some friends. And I looked over my shoulder, and Fabi was just like looking at me with just heart bubbles coming out of her eyes. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "What's up, cutie?" And she asked, <laughs> like, she, she's like, "Can we?" have a moment really quick and I was like of course so we ditched our bikes and walked away from our friends and like walked out into the desert a little bit and sat down and we were watching um watching the sunrise almost get there but we're just sitting watching the sky and she looked over at me and said I have something for you I have a gift for you and I was like great what is it <laughs> and she, she reached into her bag and pulled out this little pouch and immediately started bawling like crying ball. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. I'm goosebumps. I'm getting goosebumps. They're happening. Yeah. And, I, and I was just like, oh my God, what is this? Okay. And and she turned around and she said just the most amazing things to me along the lines of like, I wasn't even looking for you and I found you and you're just everything to me. And and she presented me this little pouch. And inside the pouch, when I opened it, was this incredibly ornate carved little wooden box. It was the most beautiful thing that I'd ever seen. It's around your neck right now, right? It's this thing. Yeah. Oh my God. It check it on YouTube, bar. everyone. <laughs> yeah. Check out YouTube. Yeah. Can and you can't even it. see the intricacies because you, you showed me a photo. Yeah. We'll yeah. yeah it's photo amazing. So see it up close because it's literally like it just blew my mind looking at it. And, and, and then my mind got blown even more because Fabi was like, I designed it. And I was like, mm-hmm. what? And so <laughs> she told me the story about the box. So basically, about it was maybe like three years before Jeff and I were dancing. We had our foreheads pressed together and we were just dancing and dancing was how we first met that was how we first connected and it's always been a very special intimate place for us to be dancing together and we had our foreheads pressed together and I had this vision and it was of this little tiny carved intricate wooden box that was our love and it contained our love and it was the most beautiful thing I'd seen and I kept sort of over the next couple of years, like envisioning this box and being like, all right, I'm going to make this somehow. And so I like kept drawing it out and I was like, what, you know, obviously I couldn't remember all the details, but I remember the gist of it. And I was, so I spent time designing it, drawing it, and then brought it to uh, somebody who does, who does laser cutting and we worked it out to cut it. And he's like a woodworker too, right? It was a woodworker. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So you had, yeah, which I love that. Yeah. And then we put it together and um, and I, yeah, ha- for a couple of months worked on, on this, creating this little piece. Right. And so she gave it to me out there and I was just like, amazing. And, and, and I was like, t- like, I'm fiddling around with it. Like, does it open? And I'm just like, no, but you have to. And she was like, you have to keep it on yourself for all the important things. And then she looked at me and was like, you got it. And I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, I got it. Heard. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, for sure. 100%. So, um, Exactly 24 hours later, the next sunrise is when I proposed to Fabi. Mm-hmm. And I'd been thinking about it for like, I mean, I planned it for months and like had already, like when we came back to visit her family um, earlier in the summer, I stole away and got like some private time with her mom and her dad, asked them both individually for their blessing. Um, and like one of the last things I did before heading out into the desert was pick up a ring, just like because I wasn't entirely sure what it was going to look like out there because it's a constantly shifting environment and there's so many different variables to account for. And it's like, what if there's a dust storm? Like, what if something crazy happens? Like, oh my God, I just kind of have to be on alert and hope that the perfect opportunity presents itself and I can capitalize on it. So I was like going in like ready, like coming in hot and at the same time needing to hide this ring because we were living in a tent together. And it was still like, it was kind of ambiguous and it was just like, I wasn't sure if it was the right time to do it at Burning Man simply because I was like 98% sure that she was going to say yes. But 
it was just a long <laughs> lines of like, I just wanted it to be like I just wanted it to be so perfect for her like just mm-hmm. wanted it to be the most special thing for her so it was all around like you know timing and setting and so forth and like it was difficult out there that year just condition wise so I was kind of like I ah, like okay I want to but like uh like what if what if and then after she gave me this then that's when I like was going to sleep that night and like just up thinking about the box thinking about like everything that had clearly been put into it and also thinking about how I'd wanted to give her you know her own playa gift her own gift out there and the only thing that I could think of that would even come close to matching the degree of devotion and artistry and mastery and obsession that she put into this was represented in the ring that I bought which was like my answer to that it's like any like that same degree of energy like I put into our relationship and our love and so forth so it's the only thing that I could come even close to matching this and I wasn't even trying to you know like one up or anything because look at it (laughs) Um, but I got just I got crazy emotional when I thought about it and was like okay this is happening like this is happening this feels crazy but I remember her talking about that. She was like, you're like, oh, this is like going through a process or something a little bit. She's like, what's going on? Wait, but then tell the best part though, because the best part is this okay, is like, yeah, yeah, this yeah, is yeah, the totally best sure. part. Yeah. Like, yeah, I sure. love it. So it's like, like okay, so like 24 hours later. Gonna cry. Yeah, 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 for sure. All right. So 24 hours later, right? Like we're sitting, like we had decided to get up and like, and get and catch, catch an early night so we could wake up and watch sunrise together. That was part of my plan. I was like, can we watch sunrise again? Mm-hmm. And so we hollered out. I thought that I was going to get up early enough to like make us drinks and like, you know, but we kind of slept in because we were just exhausted and like woke up and, and, and Fabi was like, Oh God, like, I don't know. It's, I'm really tired. And in my head, I'm like, okay, like, don't push yourself. I'm about to make a promise to always take care of you no matter what, like, but <laughs> it's not the right time. And, and like, let's just sleep in. And, and she's like, no, 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 it's important to you. I'll do anything for you. And that's when I was like, Oh. <laughs> I was like, all right, girl, we gotta go. We gotta go. <laughs> so we hopped on our bikes and rode back out in the desert. And like, I'm like struggling. Meanwhile, yeah, <laughs> you were like, you're like, God, why are we doing this right now? What's the urgency? He straight up was okay. like, babe, you okay? I was like, my yeah. body said no, but my heart said yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's a coconut water stack. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so we make it out to the desert and we're sitting watching the sunrise, and I'm like shaking and crying, just like, this is really gonna happen. And she's like, are you okay? I'm like, and I'm like, what's I'm happening? Like, it's fine. It's fine. I just, it's sunrise. I always get emotional and so forth. And like, was an entire it's still like running in my head, like, is this the right time? Is this the right time? And then I see that the sun has started to crest the horizon. And I had always imagined that it's sunrise at Burning Man. So it had to be right then. And my whole being was like, now or never, bro, now or never. And I, and I was like, I don't know. And like something came over me and I turned to her. And when I turned to her, my entire emotional body like ripped apart. And like, and I was sobbing before I could even say anything and was like, I actually have a plight. <laughs> 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 and she felt it and she's crying before I can finish saying it and I, and I have her close her eyes and I say some things and when she opens I'm on my knees in front of her holding this engagement ring in its little container mm-hmm. and like and she tells me later about these thoughts that she's having yeah basically like, I was like it's probably a necklace it's probably, I was like there's no way I was I was not not did not get it yeah yeah she's like this cannot be what it is so she opens the box and sees an engagement ring in it and just cries and I start crying I'm like it's working all right ah and like and then we both have this really intense you know moment and then she kind of like looks up at me like are you gonna say something <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like take a deep breath like you know like center my center my entire being and then to ask the question like will you marry me and she's like ah and I'm like ah and we're both like ah <laughs> like, energetic things are happening between the two of us and like and we have you know this thing happens and then like i look up at her like are you gonna say something <laughs> she's like not saying anything you're like what's happening say anything. So is that a no is that a no it's a two percent chance that you was off <laughs> like damn it i, I did <laughs> not get this right like, i didn't brief, get it right. straight up in the brief eternity that happened like we looked at each other and she didn't say yes and she didn't say no what she said was i said open the box <laughs> And I freaked out. I freaked out, started laughing, started crying, and was like, you told me that it didn't open. And she showed me the secret latch that she had designed into the box that I was wearing around my neck. And out that of it. A little waterlogged. Out, out, outside of it. That means he really <laughs> never takes it off. Is forever. And a scroll, a little scroll. What was it? What yeah, came yes, out of it? A tiny little scroll with one little intricate cursive word. Yes. Oh. That you wrote, Fabi, right? You had written that on there, beautifully I, scrolled. I had written yes on it. I thought maybe he'd wear this box for years before he asked me to marry him. I was like, he'll wear my yes until it's the moment. And it happened to be 24 hours later. 
Wow. I just fucking love that. Yeah. <laughs> so, and the box is, I mean, that is just a beautiful proposal. It's, and does, it have, does it get more beautiful? Than it that? doesn't. It doesn't. In my opinion, I'm like, you can't write that shit. Like, you can't make it up. Like, that's like... People would say that's out of the movies, but then that would be cheesy. Like, this is better than the movies. This is y'all. better. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. It's like, that's so beautiful. And just the power of three years, three years of you also envisioning this box. Well, what comes to mind is that... So you were talking about, and I think we'll get into this, the alignment piece, because you said a 98% chance she would say yes. She was <laughs> like, I know I know you're going to ask me at some point. I just don't know when it is. Uh -huh. And so you're talking about how you have these different paths. She was on this tantric path that you weren't on that one, but you were doing other work with you know, the shadow and, the, and your, the, your, your inner self. And yet so you were able to come together and really meet each other. What I'm hearing is like, even though nothing's for sure, you're not like, oh, guaranteed, he's going to ask me tomorrow or she's going to say yes. Um, Cause we never know that, but you felt obviously very aligned, which brings me to um, the alignment piece here. So how did you both know that this was the thing? You know, how, how do you know that that alignment is there and so, so big, so great, so important that you really want to continue to build this life together? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's been an evolving thing over the past years. It's been an evolving, uh, seeing how we approach everything, seeing how we approach conflict, seeing how we approach, um, growth, seeing how we approach, uh, intimacy, but then on another level from very, very early on, it was very clear from, from our very first interaction, which was on the dance floor. It was very, you know, I, I felt him picking up very subtle energetic cues that I was mm -hmm that I was putting out. And that wasn't something that I was, that I was necessarily, that, that's not something that you find in everybody. So very quickly, I felt that. And, you know, also just in the realm of sexuality, I have had many experiences of as a, as a sex coach and as somebody who's studied and, and practiced a lot in that realm, a lot of sort of like showing people things or being in a specific role that is fun, but sometimes it's great when somebody just meets you and holds you and surpasses you and shows you things in something that's actually the profession that you made for yourself. And so from very early on, there was this, um, we were coming from different places, right? He also wasn't this like tantric fuck boy who was like, you know, tantric like, fuck boy. Like, mm -hmm. I like that saying though. That's a good one. <laughs> he was like, you know, he was like, Oh yeah, I circulate my energy because that's what makes sense for me. That's what gives me the most amount of energy or like I'm dedicated to my Kung Fu practice and my, energetic and emotional hygiene. And so there was this, there was this like feeling of being met in a way while coming from a completely different place that was so inspiring. And then just has continued to show up in the ways that we, that we meet in lovemaking, in conflict, in challenging moments, in growth moments. Well, and you both are healers. Uh, you really are. And um, what we will talk about um, most Jeff's work and Fabian, you've talked about your work before and you both are practitioners and you have, you, you implement all of these things that, that are on many sides. They're usually, they're not Western medicine, but they're very powerful, potent tools that help a lot of people. And mm -hmm. so like, I have so much gratitude for the work that you're doing and then coming together as two healers, because there's a level of understanding when you're working with, with people's sexuality for one. And then um, on the other side, um, and Jeff, I'll let you talk about your work uh, later, but from my understanding, it's just both very potent that you are each other's one, one. I like to call it the one, one, the one, one. So that was just my, <laughs> um, my little tangent, but there's a common, there's, there's such a common, we, we've talked about this before and we've mentioned it about putting a ring on it. It's going to fix everything. As soon as you put a ring on it, you're mine. But obviously we know that we don't own people and it's a level of commitment, but is it possible that putting a ring on it will fix everything? Will it? Or is commitment <laughs> and marriage, does that just create more safety and security for people? I would love for you to touch on that. Well, yeah, I, like thinking about that question, like the, the the belief that just putting a ring on it will fix everything, like that doesn't make sense. But <laughs> <laughs> no, Not at all. We were, when she sounds like we definitely don't agree with that. But, <laughs> no, we don't, but it's a good question. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. right? but, but there are well, people who think that, like they yeah, yeah. think, yeah. if you get, no, no, if you no, get that, sure. then we're like, safe. No, it's like, I mean, that's a, it's, that's a, I mean, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot contained within that, that belief. Um, like just, just looking at it, like analytically tuning to tuning into commitment. It's like, like, yeah, but depending on like, I mean, commitment to what, right? Like commitment to growth, commitment to repair, commitment to like, you know, like, I mean, staying true to yourself while at the same time holding the other person in their highs. Like, yeah, like all of those things are like 100% extremely helpful in our relationship. Absolutely. Yeah. 
we were talking about it earlier and we were talking about like the things that create safety um, in, in our relationship. And there's a lot there. One of the biggest things though, at one point was when we both communicated to each other, like kind of early on, early on how we would both be, even though this was clearly the thing, like, and it was very, very apparent, like super early on from our first interaction, just like Claudia said, it was like, okay, this is really special. And then eventually it's like, okay, this is clearly my person, like 100%. And um, there also was a point when we both like firmly communicated to each other like hey and like this is the best thing that i've ever been in and i can't imagine like this is beyond what i thought i could imagine and i would be willing to walk away from this if that was what was the most like the healthiest thing to do like i would not stay like both of us were willing to you know less afraid of being alone than staying in something that did not feel healthy and mm -hmm. in communicating that willingness and that capacity <laughs> to be able to be and like on our own, that actually created a whole massive amount of safety and trust and respect with each other, which then led for another even deeper level of intimacy. Right. And that was during a, a period of challenge. That was a, during a struggle period where we were like, I absolutely adore you. And this is so wonderful in so many ways. And there are these other things. And if this isn't if this isn't healthy or if this isn't good, if this doesn't feel good to us in, you know, in, in some deep ways, like we will step away if that's what we need to do for ourselves. And that created such a safety in our own trust of I, you're choosing to dedicate yourself to yourself and therefore I can trust you to take care of you. Right. But then piggybacking on like it's something that something that you said about commitment, like it also became really clear, like at one point uh, throughout, like, I mean, not I mean, even moving into it and like making the decision um, and like, or or everything that went along the lines with like, just imagining what this would like, what, like imagining the person that I needed to be, to be able to ask that question and to be able to look her, her parents in the eye and say like, when everybody else drops the ball, I will catch it. And like, it was mm. just hardcore identity work. And it really did. There was some sort of like archetypal shift that happened and just like making, like claiming that and and like voluntarily stepping into that degree of devotion and commitment and like and, and it shifted a lot of things for both of us and and then and, and like and just, i'm trying to figure out how to work a meme around it now which is like, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> waiting for that one apparently you have fire memes. memes i've heard your memes are just so good. Way go. both of them so, do i better check yeah out. that's the next meme coming up yeah, yeah. But the, the idea that like the highest levels of functionality and performance like really seem to be well there's certain high levels of functionality and performance that only seem to be activated or accessed through like commitment through the frequency mm -hmm. of commitment like you're all in yeah yeah and so it's like it definitely enhanced us to a certain degree it definitely like just like unlocked more of what was already there i probably wouldn't lean to it and like lean, lean towards it as a like this is going to fix everything it's like no like what's going to fix everything is like a willingness to look at the hard things and to be with the hard things and like communicate and be honest and vulnerable and all of that like like what the work is going to fix the thing <clears throat> but, and the commitment is to that work right yeah. mm -hmm. and that's yes. something that i've seen shift i mean i've seen our love making i've seen our sex shift into just even more of a claiming but i've also seen our conflict shift into even more of a i am i have committed to working through this right, right? Mm -hmm. so it does create a little bit like more safety and security in a sense like at least it has for us uh, just like okay like i mean because i'm making this decision and she's experiencing like we, we just what it communicates to both of us on like just like a deep like a somatic and psychological level like there's definitely been an increase in relaxedness and ease even when there has been conflict it's like all right cool like no even though we already it was clear like yeah this is the thing like it's still it just made it even more of that mm -hmm. so yeah I, I love that so i had a friend that recently asked me mutual friend we won't use names but recently asked me what i'm someone who i'm not set on getting married like i, I, mean, I would like to have a celebration of my my relationship you don't want to marry me i april and I already married so that's we're why married. i can never get married. married anyways because we're married yeah. and it's california can only marry one person at a time so uh but when april and i get divorced i you know i might i might want to get married doing air quotes because it's not but not the traditional way that people do it um and i'm a little bit of a rebel and i there's a lot certain things within, within the institution that i personally don't love but i'm i'm not saying this for other people this is just amy um and i had a friend that recently asked you know you're someone who is not set on getting married but you're open to it um i don't want to birth human children in this lifetime so when you're in a relationship is my friend asking me this how do you know you're safe then and i was like honestly i think the greatest thing that makes me feel safe is that as long as my, myself and, and my partner that i'm with are very committed to doing the work mm -hmm. our personal work and our work in the relationship and when one or both of those goes out the door then i don't feel safe mm -hmm. and in fact i could be i could probably be married and i have a partner who you know i have a ring on it with the government documentations and everything and all of a sudden they're like i'm not willing to do the work and then i i'm fucked you know i'm i'm screwed that's what I happened feel, to me i got married and Super i love unsafe yeah, in that. and it was like 
he didn't want to do the work. So and, I was like, okay. And I don't think anyone could promise. Hard. Like I promise I'll always do the work because, you know, sometimes people hit moments like I'm just too exhausted. And the hope is that that can shift. But I like what you said, because I think that yeah. that says a lot. And it's not just working on the relationship where we go to couples therapy. It's ourselves and the relational dynamic. And I like what you said, when it doesn't feel like it's aligned or feeling really good, that we're going to choose that before just like, oh, we should do this because that's what you're supposed the to do. The individuality though, that is something that I've seen. Yeah. Because this is the first time I've met most Jeff and I've hung out with Fabi many times and had conversations because you both are on your own journeys, mm -hmm. which is so important, which, yeah, well, I think it's, yeah, it's like ties the, into this. It's the individual journeys and then the collective journeys. Because like what Esther Perel, right? We're too, on, too much on the individual journeys. We're like, hello, where'd you go? And then yeah. we're too much enmeshed in each other. Then it's like, can I get some space? And the codependency <laughs> kicks in. You're so codependent. You're like, what are you doing? And then there's there could be residual feelings of jealousy yeah. or... Or there's there's a lot of things that can come up, and that's that's a thing. And, so that's and, a good point. And one other thing I'll just say before we move, move on to more about you all is um, there's some. I think Fabi, you know, I won't say their name here, but um, one of our someone that's been a teacher within our community, uh, he said that the having a uh, you know marriage commitment, marriage where you actually like do whatever the documents or whatever you're doing that makes it harder to leave. And he's not saying this like do it so that's harder for you to leave, but he's like, well. There, one of the blessings is there's no easy back door because it's a process. Just like, I mean, April, would you say it takes six hours to get married and six months to get divorced? Or something? At least that's a minimum. Like getting married. Yeah, I mean, I got married minutes. at a courthouse yeah. and that took about 45 minutes. Yeah. And to get divorced took at least six months. I don't even know if my divorce is actually ever finalized. Are I have you, no idea. Wait, is you married to two people? Jesus, yeah, yeah. Amy and okay. I know. So don't call the authorities. Uh oh, it was so. I, but I liked that. Like that got my, like, I've I've been like not not anti marriage for other people for myself because for various things like LGBTQ rights, the very all kinds of things that are just kind of personal to me. I but I like that. I was like interesting perspective. So like we you not that you're trapped, but there it's a little less open to just like you know what fuck this, this isn't working. I'm out. Um, and so I, that I appreciate, but I think that people look at that as the end all band aid. Like, well, once I get it, I'm safe. I'm cool. Obviously we're saying no, that doesn't, because you can still get divorced. People, do you cheat, have affairs? A divorce is just a breakup things. with paperwork. That's what I call it. It's as expensive well. breakup. <laughs> 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 um, so anyways, okay. If you, I mean, if you have more to say about that, you're go ahead. And um, I also am curious what you think really are the underlying qualities that make your relationship work. And I know you've shared some of them, but like, what are some of the key like nuggets of gold that we should hear about that really makes it work for you? Yeah. I think each of our willingness to do our work, each of our willingness to be with discomfort, <laughs> Mm. to be with all of the stuff that comes up and to really be with it and to be with it longer than is comfortable. <laughs> Sometimes in short sips, you know, we do the best that we can, but, um, I think you, you, when we were talking about this earlier, you were saying like under, there's like an underlying grit of like, I'm going to keep looking at what's there. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep being here. I'm going to keep continuing to be here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, and we kind of, I mean, it's, we were, individually equipped with kind of like an aptitude for it just based on based on our inner our like our self practice our self work and like you know like the the ability to i mean the like the practice technique of looking at our own shadows so which is fantastic because like just all of your stuff gets brought up in relationship and all of a sudden you just have a really 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 defined and reflective mirror just highlighting like everything that you know i mean you just get close enough to something then all of your tender bits are going to bump up to each other and so having like having the mindset of how like how any conflict is actually a vehicle into a deeper sense of connectivity if you're mm -hmm. truly working, right and and like how everything that gets presented is actually an opportunity to either address some sort of unmet underlying need or to be able to take like you know manageable action which also addresses some other fundamental needs so it's like there's just i mean i kind of joked about it at first with that because getting involved with a relationship and intimacy coach is like wow like i am in a full-on relationship boot camp right now <laughs> all the time you're like damn it and then he does he's a shadow works up specialist so it's just like oh my god it's a good <laughs> blend <laughs> well, and that's the thing though so the shadow part when i think of shadow it's like hey guess what sometimes shit's ugly and stuff can be ugly. It's not always going to be rainbows, motherfucking butterflies, the <laughs> orgasms that you're like, wow, da da, Sabenya. You know, it's sometimes like, gremlin you're like you know, it's, <laughs> yeah, sometimes it can be ugly. Sometimes you're like, yo, things aren't so beautiful and in the light, they can be in the shadow. 
straight up and that's like and it's one of the things that created the most at least like for me it created the most one of the most powerful or potent senses of like admiration and trust and respect was just how willing this person is and owning the like the the bits that are uncomfortable and like it models it really really well um and like and so modeling what like skillful vulnerability looks like and how that mm-hmm. translates into like once again it's like how can you really like love somebody or how can you be loved if you don't really allow yourself to be seen and so mm. like, and so that's definitely something it's like not only like the willingness on both of our parts to just like put it all down and be like actually like here's what's up and here's the honest thing and here's the thing that I really don't want to bring attention to like that's one thing but th- that's definitely a necessary component but then also as a result of you know the inner work on the other part they don't shy away from that they don't pull away from that they don't get triggered or they can manage their own you know whatever in the face and still be a welcoming safe receptive place for that vulnerability and that is continuously just been like when the other person gets excited when you show you know like the thing that you're most ashamed about and like that creates a lot of safety and a lot of connection and trust when they're like cool shadows awesome let's exactly. dive in. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, well and I know for myself like as a you know as a sex and intimacy coach if something comes up around intimacy or around sex it's like also doubled with the like how have I not figured this out by now like this is my profession and to have someone just so to have somebody to to workshop all of the things that are like the most I mean dealing with things around around sex and intimacy it's so it's so vulnerable and um, you know, I'm, it, it's so ironic because I'm holding space for people in that all the time. And then there are these moments where things will come up and I'm like, ah! mm-hmm. <laughs> and just having, yeah, having the space to practice that level of vulnerability. And because it's always changing, right? There's never a set <laughs> one set mechanism of this. As soon as we implement these three things, exactly. we're going to be great <laughs> forever, forever. <laughs> it's like, no, no, bro. No, you're going to have yeah. to ship some things and things are going to change no matter you're the two, you're two of the same humans, right? right. But we have emotions and feelings and mm-hmm. circumstance and uh, well, all things come out too that we I mean we can't see everything all away. I mean, I don't at least I'll speak for myself. I haven't I seen wish everything I could. all that would be amazing. That'd be I'm awesome. Like, Where'd this come I, from? I don't know. No, no instead <laughs> it's like shit. I I didn't know this thing was in there, or like, oh my god, I'm working on this thing still. Okay. Yeah, here we go. Oh, I thought this was oh, fucking buried. Damn it. Yeah. I've gotten I've gotten really good in this relationship with because you know, over the course of my life, there have been so many times where I like just want them to read my mind and I just want to get what it is that I need that I don't even know what I need, and I just want them to get it. And I've gotten really good at being like, babe, can you hold my face in your hands and then kiss my eyelids and tell me them so beautiful. I like, like getting really specific. And instead of being like, he didn't give me what I need instead being like, I think this might be exactly what I need. Can we try it out? <laughs> and like just yeah. leaning into the vulnerability of asking for what we need in, in the realm of like affirmations and like all these other little things that I was so ashamed of before that I needed. And, and just being like, this is what I need in this. Yeah. In this moment, in this relationship, in this, in this lovemaking session and whatever it is. And as tuned in as you two are, it's still, it's evident. And we want to talk a little bit about the tools, but not, you know, your partner's not a mind reader. You're like, yo, I know, even though we know each other so well and so deeply, you're not a mind reader. I still have to ask you for the kissing of the eyelids or scratching of the back or the, Hey, can you braid my hair? And can we talk about like Barbies? I don't fucking know. You know, I'm just like, like whatever, whatever you're into, I'm just like throwing out some random weird. I like that one. That's fun. Yeah. That's what April. Okay. Apparently I need to get some Barbies over here. <laughs> Dude, I had like 75 Barbies growing up. They're like my obsession. But we we talk we about that on another show. anytime you want it. Uh, oh, thank you. So so we so a few tools. So yeah. obviously that the ability to ask for what you want seems like a, a big one. The ability to uh, have your independence and not have to be drawn to the any any sort of codependency, right? So mm-hmm. what other tools? do you believe would be helpful for other folks to know if they're want if they want to grow and nourish their relationship what what do you think would be effective for those folks out there that work for you one thing is like self practice and that's been so important to both of us hence also why both of us teach that so much in in our work is self pleasure practice energetic practice getting your setting your energy dealing with your emotions getting really taking care of your own strengthening your own inner ability to take care of yourself, ability to take care of the other person, ability to be with what is ability to explore your own sexuality so that you can meet like that self-practice has been such a core piece. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, all of that core, like all that coalesces into like, I mean, like I'm a huge, huge, huge EFT, like emotional freedom technique user. Um, so tapping how that combines with shadow integration or parts work, um, the meditation practice and just observing like sensation in my body. That is just one of the hugest things, like the, the ability to notice like the small little tiny things going on in myself. That's like how I developed the deep deep listening to be able to meet her and like and how that all translates into like a hygienic practice for both of us where it's like not only like emotional and energetic like hygiene and maintenance but also the ability to like use any trigger as like a catalyst to actually be able to explore like the deepest parts of ourselves and like address attachment and address address previous like any i mean basically anything serves as both the medicine and the teacher um Mm -hmm. if you got the right tools and the right mindset so I love so because earlier you said, how can you love or be loved? I might not be saying this perfectly um, without the willing to be seen. And originally, I thought it was like, is he going to say without loving yourself? Because that's a hard one for a lot of people. They're like, what if oh, I never yeah. fully loved it? I, but you said being seen. And that was like, that was really And the energetic powerful. hygiene. I've, yeah, that's a new one for I've me I've received <laughs> a lot of really good buzzworthy feeds from you. No one good uh, most, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, like, I'm like, wow, that is very intelligent. And like, you should trademark that right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and I, so I, before I go into this other juicy question for you all, I was thinking about the, you know, the, yeah, the nourishment pieces and, you know, that you're using here to tend to the relationship. One th- thought that came up before I go into another juicy topic, just real quick. What if, so say Fabi's like, Hey, can you give me a hug and kiss my eyelids and pet my head? And you're like, you know, I'm not there right now. What is, what is your advice to people who, cause you're, this is like a constant dance, right? So what if one partner's like, or they're resentful, they're like, you know, I feel like I haven't been receiving much of touch with you. So how can that person respond in a way that's helpful? And how does the person that maybe feels rejected have can they navigate that? Okay, gotcha. So to be able to like the way that I would respond and like the way that I've learned to respond in a way that is most helpful, which is just like the difference between night and day, like, and I, and I really noticed the shift in this relationship. And it was like, and it was because I noticed it modeled to me at one point. And then I just tried it out and was like, oh, this works, which is, is like the ability to be able to say, I'm noticing that I am experiencing shutdown right now, or I'm feeling closed, or I'm like noticing that I'm angry or resentful or whatnot. And just being able to actually just observe and name what I am experiencing as opposed to automatically reacting from it before my thought has caught up or uh, before my thinking has even, you know, like become aware of it. Like that is like, that is a huge, huge, huge shift in being able to relate effectively, at least in my, in my experience of being able to name what I am experiencing and observe it before reacting from it like that, because it, it, it creates the space for like, to be able to, you know, communicate to the other person, like, Hey, I'm just, I'm not there right now, but to be able to do so in a way that they can actually hear, mm-hmm. uh, well, like to create as much of a probability for them to be able to hear. Right? <laughs> sometimes I can hear it. Sometimes <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> yeah, so, sometimes it doesn't matter. Right? My head. So, yeah. <laughs> right. Like that, that, that would be, I mean, that would be, that would be my go-to is just like, if you can just be honest and transparent about what you're experiencing in the moment and to be able to do that, like as like cleanly as possible, that creates like the mm-hmm. most buffer to be able to say like, Hey, like I can't, I can't meet you right now, or I can't give you what you need right now. And it's just, be, and it's, and it's just because this is where I'm at right now. And like, and also, you know, when I'm back in my body or back regulated or back, like, you know, when I'm down from like, you know, a nine back down to like a three trigger, like then I'll be open and available and we can come back to connection and love and so forth. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, this is, this is where I'm at right now. And this is, and this is the best that I can communicate it. And that's a huge thing too, is just being like, Hey, I'm actually been like being able to say, I'm actually so triggered right now that it's actually affecting my ability to communicate that I'm triggered. Like, so I'm going to do <laughs> what I can to communicate this, but it's probably just going to be verbal diarrhea all over the place because, <laughs> because I'm literally just trying to, you know, think yeah. out loud right now. And I'm, you know, and, and my thinking is affected by whatever emotions I'm, I'm dealing with. Like that's, those are all, you know, potential mm-hmm. templates and it's yeah. still close. Hard as fuck, regardless. And then on the opposite side, Fabi, if that did happen and he couldn't meet you, it's not like you're taking things personally, right? Because yeah, you do it, right? I mean, I, I mean, sometimes, sometimes some I'm taking do. it ever so personally. <laughs> We're not but perfect, okay? Yes, I'm doing my best. <laughs> and, and, you know, this, this also, I think external support also it plays into this so much. We both are really good at, uh, we both do session trades with, uh, with friends of ours, we both have practitioners that we go to for support. We have support outside of the relationship. Um, we have the most incredible couples counselor ever 
Jamie Williams, who actually, I believe you went to Somatica training with Amy. Oh, maybe she, we're in the same class. She, yeah, I think so. Oh, um, awesome. But she, like just having, having a support system where we can workshop all the things and then, and then not just sort of like pour everything onto each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Also having an awareness of our, like of our own attachment dynamics as well and being like, okay, like you're actually like, yeah. okay, you're islanding right now. Like you're going to be like, this is, this is actually just part of my, my functioning. I'm actually like, I need to be like become quiet and introverted so I can like get myself back into myself as opposed to, and also recognizing that at times that's going to be incredibly triggering for, for, the other for, for because... mommy tsunami over here. Yeah. <laughs> mommy tsunami. <laughs> I like that. Mommy tsunami. That's, That's like a most trademark. Mommy tsunami. That's, like yeah. mommy soon- <laughs> That's when you're like, what's going on here? Hey, <laughs> lads. I'm feeling a lot. You. <laughs> <laughs> Coming all tsunami onto the island. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. So we have to move to another topic. Is this <laughs> the best sex you've ever had? the show definitely yeah this is actually yeah. this is actually the only sex <laughs> that's it that's it that's a, yeah, compare, a lot to compare to <laughs> like when you're like my favorite nephew and i only have one nephew you're my favorite, you're my favorite. <laughs> yeah yeah oh my God. Uh, no. Uh, no it for sure is and it's so much of what we've already spoken about around that safety and that patience that patience with each other in in sexuality and in um, you know, the, the ability to be vulnerable, the ability to be patient with ourselves and with each other and understanding of each other's whole history. Plus he practices Kung Fu, which automatically makes you an awesome lover. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a deep nice. meditator and meditators make great lovers. For sure. Yes, they do. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Sure. And like, just, and also just like, I mean, there's a constant and increasing, like once again, every time we move through, you know, like whatever the thing happens to be, then there's just another deeper level of whatever. And so there's just been a continuous, just full bodied fuck. Yes. On both sides for mm-hmm. since like our first dance, basically. Mm. Yum. All right. Well, let's continue on to the topic of hot sex. So hot sex and long-term relationships. What are your top tips for creating and maintaining fulfilling sex and long-term relationships, including marriage? number one thing that i would say is touch yourself like really i know for for myself when i step away from my self-pleasure practice or my my curiosity and exploration that's when it starts there starts to be a lapse that's where there starts to be some like a little bit more, you know, like less of something. And then when I come back to my practice and I discover myself and I get curious and then, then I have more to bring to our connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and like two things immediately come to mind for me. Like one is like developing, like developing a degree of patience and curiosity and observation, like just in yourself, because because what I notice is that in being able to be with the different things that come up for me in a better way, then like that also means that I can be with, you know, anything else that comes up in, you know, everything that comes up in my relationship in a similar way. It's a reflection of how I already engage with parts of myself. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and uh, which once again, and like that degree of patience and understanding is just so nurturing and, you know, in any intimate setting, especially that intimate setting. Um, as well as this riffs off of what Fabienne just said, which is, developing like a very deep and peaceful and reverent relationship with my own sexual energy and being able to rest in that and tend to that and nurture that like that affects the way in which like the way in which I move in the world Mm. and um in the way in which we engage with each other and it's like it's one of the most powerful and potent things that I've experienced as a result of just exploring in this level of relationship and like just intimacy, like with self. And as that translates into intimacy with the world around me. That's beautiful. Well, I have one really important question um, to ask you both. <laughs> and are we invited to the wedding? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot. It's the most important question to interview. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I can't wait to hear your speech. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, girl. They have a good oh, one. Oh, girl. Oh, you know. Yeah. She's going to give a speech to sing you songs. It's going to be great. No, we, In fact, we I want a re- show. I oh, want a yeah. whole little show. Oh. Yeah. I, I have show. You I got, got it. You. Yeah. I got you. Most people like Chippendales. We're chip, chip and dip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay. So that was a joke, but um, no, no, I'm serious. Really. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so how can, would you please tell folks 
how they can find you, work with you. I know you have some some retreats coming up. There's some courses you're offering. Uh, this is 2023 now, so please let folks uh, also your social handles so they can see your fucking memes. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> let's talk about all of it. Right. So uh, you can find me at fadianamik.com or at fadianamik. Pretty straightforward if you can spell it right. <laughs> As two ends, call. everyone. Two ends. It'll be in our show notes too. Yeah, it will yeah. be. <laughs> um, two ends and two ends in the first name and the last yeah, name. Exactly. Okay. And yeah, I've got a sexual self-mastery for men course. And that will be opening up again. We're starting again in February. It's an amazing group of guys every single time. It's just absolutely incredible. And it's all about developing your sexual practice, developing your own sexual mastery and your own sexual practice within your own um, within your own body and self so that you can really come to sex with that. And then I've got a dating course that's um, also primarily for men. And then we've got a retreat coming up in February. That's uh, shout out UFT. It's hugely his methodology. Mm -hmm. Talk about that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, in, and so the way that you can get in contact with me or check me out is um, most Jeff M O S J E F dot co, not com dot co, because someone else picked up the other thing. I, I think know. I think it's out. I think we can buy it. I think it's. Oh, time. get it. Oh, oh get yeah. it this, before this episode I comes check out. Every month. <laughs> 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 Jeff dot co or com. Yeah. Be able to, it'll be pretty apparent regardless when, when you get to it. And then also, um, most Jeff, most underscore, underscore Jeff on Instagram. Um, I'm probably the only cognitive design specialist that's going to pop up when, when mm. and it's just like, I mean, check out for the fire memes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Cognitive oh yeah. Design specialist. I'm getting so many good things from you. Cognitive design specialist. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> well, no, I know. That's why it's so fucking brilliant. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So um. So both like. A, I want to be your manager. Can I just be your manager? Yeah, totally for sure. <laughs> your yeah. manager, but. <laughs> <laughs> just like like straight up, it's like nice to meet you. Come to the wedding. You're my manager. That escalated. <laughs> That's really I just good inserted life. myself into yeah. your fucking life real quick. Oh, like, it's okay. For, like, get, like, no, like, get in here. You're I great. use loop first before I insert myself into your life okay yeah. i use the loop. it's <laughs> nice to work with professionals i appreciate yeah. it <laughs> um so yeah so that so uh so my website instagram facebook those are all places that you can get at me and check out um like yeah like i mean my container work with coaching my courses like i have a self healer program and training intensives and that's what we're talking about now which is in uh, february we're running the second round of the sanctum which is our transformational healing intensive that also serves as a practitioner certification in largely in the modalities that we all use to be who we are and to serve people in the way that we do. And this is all basically stemmed or stemmed from, these are the things that we had to learn in order to be able to do what we do and um, take care of ourselves in this way. And it also just made us and has continued to make us extremely valuable to the people around us as well. So. If we do say that ourselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're not trying to toot our own horns, but beep beep. <laughs> no, he, he, and and well deserved. Um, I would give you a trumpet rather than a horn. You know, like a specific type of horn because you're so fantastic. And a trumpet is loud and proud, and that's like the thing. Like uh -huh. y'all, yeah, you just have like some skills. So to everyone listening out there, like these folks are legit. Like they help people and not only th this was a display of their relationship, yes, but it's also a display of how relationships can be successful, how love can be there even in long-term relationships. Uh, and it's still there and you can cultivate, you can cultivate a happy life with your partner and uh, there are tools and it takes work on both sides. It takes together work. It takes separate work. It takes shadow work, fucking shadows. We love those um, because without <laughs> the shadows, you know, like you, you need to see the shadows. So well, you can't um, go anywhere without your shadow. It's no, you can't. There. Yeah. It's there. <laughs> it's, it's not haunting you though. It's there. And you can like, you can put an arm around your shadow and say, yo, what's up? I like you. Um, I, meme about I don't that. love you yet. I don't love you yet, but I like you a lot. Uh, so uh, before we have to say goodbye, I don't want to. I never want to say goodbye uh, because it's see you later, first of all. And second of all, uh, Amy has something to share um, because do not press stop or switch to another podcast because oh, you need to listen to a sizzler a trailer do you all want an rv get, an rv, an RV. at the end of this episode do you want to i want to get double teamed in my rv come on april you want to i'm raising my hand yes <laughs> yes uh but before she introduces this i just want to i just want to invite everyone out there listening please go ahead give us five stars on 
iTunes and Spotify because it helps more folks find people like Fabian and most Jeff. And that there is a free, it's free. It's a free, it's a free for you. So <laughs> that's why we need you to give us your, your payment is five stars and you don't have to write a, a total huge novel. You can just give us a couple of emojis. You can give the wet emoji. If you, Ooh, you, know, if you like it wet, uh, oh, an eggplant, you can give, I don't care. You can give a fucking dog emoji, cool, whatever you want. Like we, we appreciate it. It just helps more people find this podcast out there in the realm of uh, media, which is vast. Uh, Ah, what am I missing? I'm not going to say chat for now because it's not chat for now um, because Amy's going to talk about double teamed. You got the reviews. We love all of our listeners. We love. Oh, yeah, we do. Oh, I didn't say that. You you full of hate. There's too much shadow. Just kidding. (laughs) My shadow. (laughs) It was the shadow. Her shadow was just talking. Sorry. Uh, (laughs) No, we have lots of love for all of our listeners, for our guests, Fabienne and most Jeff over here. And um, so we are part of a wonderful podcast network called Pleasure Podcast. Shout out to Cam from sex talk with my mom we are so stoked to be part of the sex positive network it says cammy on here by the way oh, which i which i thought well, was awesome Cam, so cammy works with pleasure podcast oh, network and has her own nikki. podcast with nikki yeah i thought you misspelled cam no you added an i so double so double team so we're doing a different uh sizzla at the end of each episode i think through february and uh it's featuring other podcasts in our network and we all have different focuses and energies uh, so there's something for everyone and this one is double teamed no we're not going in my rv even though april wants to go but double teamed uh is the name of the podcast it's about non-monogamy sexuality and kink and so much more uh with cammy and nikki and you have to check it out so stay tuned it's just a short little sizzla and if you want to go listen you can go find them and the links are in the show notes uh, and go check them out and join our wonderful network are you ready chip i'm ready here we go 